Let us look at some of the main elements of sociological foundations of education. Because school and society are tied very closely together, various theories exist about what schools should be like within a society and what societal impacts should be brought into the school and educational arena. We will take a more closer look at the different theories of the relationship between school and society in a little while. But the fundamental question really is, are schools making a major difference in individuals' lives? Why were schools created? Why do schools exist if they don't make a major difference in individuals' lives? And that's not just your bright students' lives. That's not just your A-grade students' lives. In all students' lives, students will be different. We will have the A grade, the B grade, the C grade student in our class. Are all students benefiting from being in a school, from being in classrooms, from receiving an education? If all students are not benefiting, something is wrong. And yes, because students are different, the benefits will also be different. That is why when you look at success for students, you look at one student at a time. You do not look at an entire group of 30 students in a classroom. You look at one student 30 times in a classroom to determine has education made an impact on all of them. Not an easy thing to do, is time consuming, but must be done. Because mostly teachers look at a classroom as one group instead of looking at 30 individuals in that group, that difference probably is not being made today. It should be made. How schools influence social inequalities? Everybody is not the same. Society has the higher ups, the middle class, the low class. What happens in that? Where is this balance supposed to come? And so inequality already exists in society. What are schools doing about this existing inequality? Is the school, through the education it offers, enabling students to change from level 6 to maybe level 7, 8, 9, 10? Can they go up? Are individuals in schools making better lives for themselves than their parents? That should be the test. If you are in school and you're as good or worse than your parents, then the school hasn't made an impact. Education hasn't changed you. But if you can get better and you can do better for yourselves, then schools and the education you receive have made an impact. So social inequalities, will they continue to exist? Will they change? How fast they change? How slow they change? To what extent they change? All that will need to be considered. And in considering all that, it is important also to look at beyond the school. If a child is not in school, then what? If a child drops out after grade five or elementary school or middle school or does not go for further education after metric, then what? How much education is actually seen as too much education for a child? Today, Moving on from matric to intermediate to bachelor's to master's is critical. The more information, knowledge, the more qualifications, the more skills you have, the better off you will be. How school processes affect the life of children, teachers, and other adults. Now, in a school, there is more than teaching that is happening. There is a lot of socializing that is happening among the students, among the teachers, and also between students and teachers. And that is important. What are people learning through the out-of-classroom experiences that continue to happen in our schools and will continue to happen? They're happening today. They will happen tomorrow. They will happen in the future. So what learning is there for teachers, for students, for parents, for administrators, outside the classroom that is to be seen as critical in terms of developing the school, 
developing the teacher, developing the parents, and developing the students.